All right, today we're gonna be doing a clutch replacement on a Scat Pack Challenger. Um, this is the 6.4. Now this is similar to the other um, designs as well as the other Challenger. This is a 2016. Simple, nothing too crazy. This will be my first time attempt. I was checking it up on Mitchell on demand, but um, quoted like three hours for the job. Um, I don't know about that, but we'll see. First things first, um, we gotta check up the car. Disconnect the battery first, obviously, and yeah, so forth. If you haven't already, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions. And hit that subscribe button for more upcoming videos in the future. And we'll go ahead and start this video right after the intro. Alright, so we got to disconnect our negative terminal right here. You would... Go in the back of the trunk lift it right up now you have full access to the battery now it's a 10 millimeter that we're going to be disconnecting so let's just disconnect that 10 millimeter lift up the terminal and put a rag in between this and the terminal so it should come up loose if it doesn't come up loose then what you can do is you can't put a, a screwdriver right in between these two gaps and then or a flathead screwdriver and just kind of spread it and then yeah so forth so again we're gonna go ahead and put some sort of rag right there so just like that so that can make contact with the battery and make it into a full series circuit all right jacking up points um, jacked it up from the front crossbar right there and then I put the jack sends on the front so one right there and then one right there then for the rear I went on to the rear jacked it up from the differential then I went ahead and put each jack stand right there. Get that to zoom right in. So we put them right next to the the lower control arm for the rear suspension. And the same thing for the other side. We did that one. Um, I would have put it more on that little knuckle that's right there for this jack. Um, for that jack stand. But my uh, my jack was in the way. so But right there would work too as well. All right, so next thing, um, while you're lifting up the car, I would recommend to lubricate with penetrating oil your exhaust flange bolts. So there's going to be four bolts, or yeah, about six bolts in total. So two, four in the front. So one, there's the second one right over there. There's the third, and then there is the fourth one right up there. Then the other two in the rear. They're going to be right up here. I'll figure out the sizes for those in a little bit. All right, so before we drop down the exhaust, we need to go ahead and disconnect our O2 sensors. So right here is one of our tabs. So I can get that to focus. So we'll go ahead and disconnect this tab right here. Now there's a little button that we can push. All right, so right here is the little tab that we need to push right here. So just push that and then let that hang. And then same thing for the one on the passenger side. We'll just push this, pull this tab back and just like that. And then right here. We'll go ahead and lift up this tab right here. There's a little tab that we got to lift. And just like that. Ew. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. So right there, this little tab. The way how it's pushed in, just like that. So you can get a flathead screwdriver, but if you just lift it right up, just like that, it'll come right out. And then now you have full access to your cable of it dropping down. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and take off. So we're going to go ahead and take off the front um, 16 millimeter bolt. So one, two three and four on the front cats and then i'll figure out the bolt for the rear also little tip that you should know make sure you 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 are using a six point and that you have let the penetrating oil sit for about like 30 minutes so for this bolt right up here we need to use a wrench
All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just pull down on our exhaust. So pull it towards you. And the same thing for the other side too as well. We're gonna pull that one down as we're pulling both. All right, so we got both both of them down. It will probably be a little pain in the butt to put back on, but now we're gonna go ahead and take off these ones. And then these two. So these two right here, these two bolts, they're gonna be 15 millimeters. So we'll just go ahead and loosen those right up. All right, so now, once you get these bolts on, get this. All right, once you get these guys loosened up, then you can pull off the pipes, and they should slide right out. All right, so now we're gonna have access to right here. We're gonna take off these bolts for the drive shaft. All right, so now we gotta take off our drive shaft and then the we gotta use a, a star bit. So right there, that's how the star bit socket or the, the nut looks like. But the way how the tool looks like is gonna be like this. So you can get this at your local auto parts store. I got this one from Harbor Freight, made by Icon. It's a T50. So we're gonna go ahead and loosen up those bolts. All right, so I'm gonna go in the car and I'm gonna release the emergency brake so I could rotate the drive shaft. All right, now that we have our drive shaft disconnected, we're just gonna go ahead and pull this sucker right back. All right, so I think we're gonna need to pop off these little pins that are right there. Let's see if I can record this. Then we gotta pull these down. So get a pick, pop these off. So just like that. So as you can see right there. Let's see. So these little pins right here. So that one that I'm touching. Let me get it with my left hand. So this guy right here. Like you can see me moving, it's going to be all the way pushed up and you need to pull it down. I used this yellow pick right here, just like this, you can get at Harbor Freight. And then we're going to go ahead and just pull it back. So I'm going to try to do this with one hand on, on holding this guy. So we're going to get our pick and just pry right in between here. It should come right out. Or you can go from the opposite side and just push with their finger. See how right there it's popping up? And then just pull the remaining, just wiggle it right out.
All right, so there we have it. There's the pin. Now we got one more pin right here. So same thing. We need to push it up. So we're gonna just pop it right out of its clip. So once you get it all out, and then just kind of just work it. And then there we have it. So now, last thing what we have left is that we need to take off this bolt right here, and then we can we we don't we don't have any any play with that, and then we can pull out the shifter from up on top. Or I think we're gonna drop it from down below. Yeah, I think that's what it what we're gonna have to do. Um, I think that's our best course of action. Yeah, just take it up from right here. Just take it up from this bolt. All right, so there we have it. Now we're fully disconnected from there. I think we should just go ahead and take off our shifter. Um, so I think we have to go from up top to have it completely off. Coming from the inside, don't mind the mess, this is not my car. So you're gonna lift up. So just grab it from the cup holder, pull right back. And then right here, you're gonna just wiggle it right up on out of the way. And then now we need to go ahead and disconnect the little wire harness from right back here. So just right there, there's a little connector. The tab's on the bottom. So on the bottom of the tab right here. So you're gonna pull that out. Then once you get that off, I would say spin it around, but that's not the case. Um, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and take off these 13 millimeter bolts. So once we take those off, this should slide right out. And then we'll have access to this 13 millimeter bolt. Then once you take that off, it's, it should kind of fall down a little bit. And then we could just leave that bolt right there. And then the rest should be able to just push right down. And then we'll go from under and, and, and grab it. So right here, just gonna take this right up on out and just slide this out the way and there we have it so now we're gonna go ahead and disconnect our little wire harness um, we want to try to save this wire harness as much as possible so whatever little tabs try not to break them um, if you do break them then I mean it is what it is so we're gonna go ahead and disconnect this connector right here if you have a pick that would help out tremendously. So I'm going to come up from behind. And then right here I'm just going to pull on that tab. And then pull it right back. If you have a pick that will help out. And then as for here. You just kind of push up on those tabs. These ones you just got to pull right up. So If you push it with the bottom of your your uh, ratchet, it'll come out, and then you just pull it out all the way. So there should be one more connector in the back. So this connector right here, coming up from right in the back of the tail housing, we'll just pull up the tab. Now I'm pretty sure you can mix and match those those two connectors. So just remember whatever which one you you mark all right so that one has a little blue a blue little connection and then that one that one doesn't have the connector on it we left it on the transmission so they're both or they're both gray but just make sure you mark them because I'm pretty sure you can make some 
but we don't want to do that. So, same thing for this one. We're going to go ahead and pop off. We're going to go ahead and pop off this guy with the ratchet. We'll just push up on it. Just like that. And there we have it. And then coming up on the passenger side, we have these little connectors. Now one of them, you're gonna have to take from right here, just unplug it. I believe that's the, the backup um, shift interlock. And then for right here, obviously, we can either pull it out or All oh, these have locking tabs. So we're just going to go ahead and push this right up on out. All right, there we have it. We have it out. Had to use a little brute force on that one. Then go ahead and pull up this wire harness. Should separate from right there. We'll get that up and out of the way. And what else do we got? All right, so the, the harness is, is clipped in right here. So what we want to do is that we want to spread that out with the pick or the flathead screwdriver and just pull it out completely. And then we'll go on the other side. All right, so grabbing our wire harness and then pulling it towards us. There we have it. All right, so now we're ready to put, pull off the second um, half of the transmission. So this is in two parts. So you got the bell housing itself and then the transmission. So we need to unbolt the transmission from the bell housing. So we need to do this in two parts. So we're gonna have couple bolts um, let me get everything all counted up and then we'll get back to the video all right so as of right now I'm pretty sure there's a, maybe about like one bolt or two bolts up on top but I just can't see right now um, oh yeah there's one right here so I'm pretty sure there's like one more on the middle so there probably might be like four or th either three up on top or four up on top so as of right now we're gonna go ahead and there's like one that's like sitting right above right here it's really hard to to see but about so there's this bolt right here where the harness is connected to and then there's one more so you'll see this little hole with the notch so right there you'll see this hole and then over on the other side you will um, there's a bolt so I'm pretty sure there's one more uh, again this is my first time doing this one so we don't know yet or I don't know yet um, all right, so then there's one, then this is our second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and then the seventh one right there. And I don't think, oh, yep, there's a eighth one right there. And I think there might be one more in the middle. So there might be like one more right here up on top. I just don't know yet. We're going to go ahead and take off the bolts. And then we'll we'll kind of lower down the transmission a little bit. Um, we'll probably lower it by taking off these brackets. And then same thing for this one. Uh, I think we'll probably get away just probably by holding the transmission from right up here, pulling it back, and we can leave on the bracket. I think. Um, so yeah, these are 13. So one, two three four we'll take off those bolts and then the transmission will be dropped i do have a tranny jack just so you're aware um i think this transmission is a little bit heavier i remember doing this one time and it was a little pain in the butt all right so let's do that and yeah let's get it on so we'll go ahead and take off those bolts i'm gonna fast forward it i'm gonna use some extensions i'll let you know which extensions i use from up top and then these are going to be 15 millimeters all of these bolts are going to be 15. All right, so right here, we got a little swivel and then we got our 15 millimeter deep socket. Uh, it doesn't have to be deep, but then I got a, 
probably about maybe about 16 inches of extension. We'll just go ahead and get the top bolt first. So we got right there. All right, so we're on that bolt. That's right there. So as you can see, we're right there on the bolt. And then I have my extension coming all the way to right here. So we're gonna go ahead and loosen that up. All right, so we got that bolt loose and then we'll just pull that one out. There we have it. Here's the bolt. All right, so there's one bolt right here. That's right there. We already took that one off. And then there's one more like sitting right up here. So I think that's one, two, three, five, six, six, seven, eight. So yeah, I think that's, that was our eighth one. So let's go ahead and pop off that bad boy. All right, so we got it out for our last bolt. Um, we used quite a few extensions on that one. And I'm just gonna kind of rock the transmission back and forth just to see. I'm pretty sure there's like one more bolt. I mean, have to be, there has to be. All right, so let me get the tranny jack. We'll go ahead and drop down the motor mounts and then, yeah. We got our tranny jack up. Um, if you're wondering about the tranny jack, you can get this at Harbor Freight, you know, buy it, then return it. But I bought it and I kept it because I use it a lot. So, all right, um, this is the perfect tool for this job. Again, you can, you could probably use a regular jack. I used to do that back in the day, but the tranny jack is the best. All right, so we got the jack facing towards the back because I'm over here and then we're just gonna push it back. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and take off those bolts, um, just the four 13 millimeters. I don't think I should have an issue with this. Um, so we'll go ahead and lower it just a tad bit. All right, so yeah, I think that is pretty much all the bolts. Um, I see the case splitting. Yeah, so it's just only eight bolts that are actually on there. So I see the case splitting a little bit. So we'll just put this up closer. And then we'll just we'll get a flathead screwdriver or something and then right now I'm just pushing I'm just wiggling it and then also I forgot we got to disconnect the the little the clutch slave cylinder that's right there where is that so right there we got to disconnect this guy and then we'll pull this pin back and then we'll pull that. Some fluid should leak out. So get your pick. Just like that. And pull it out. And then just pull it out as fast as possible. Just like that. And then it'll start leaking out. Um, unfortunately, this one doesn't have anything to hold it. You're going to lose all your brake fluid unless if you put a cap on it. So let me go get an actual vacuum cap. Cause I usually thought these guys would have a little stopper like how the other ones would. All right, so let's pull this back. And again, it's gonna start losing fluid, but we have a vacuum cap. 
And once you push that in, it should hold its fluid. Hopefully it doesn't leak out. Well it is, slowly but surely. Alright, so anyways, well that's pretty much leaking out. We'll go ahead and pull this this right out so we're gonna spread we'll put a flathead screwdriver right in there all right so we'll put the flathead screwdriver right here and then we'll just pry it right back you have this out of focus and then you'll just work your way and then we'll work All right, so we got the case splitted. I went on the opposite side because this side was rusted in, so I just tapped in right here with the flathead. I was able to, you can usually start in between, right here, prying in between there, there's a little gap, and then I worked my way to right here, and I just pried it right open, and then it finally separated. All right, so now at this point, we are ready to drop down the tranny so we're going to pull it back as much as possible. Be careful with the little drive shaft in the rear. I think that's what's stopping us right now at that point. So I'm going to go ahead and lower it. So at the same time, what I'm doing is, for the rear drive shaft, I'm actually moving it out the way so it doesn't become a nuisance later on. So just keep pushing it up. And then for the exhaust, obviously that's going to be in the way. So we'll just lower it just a little bit. Then we should be able to sneak it right out. All right, so now we have it out. Obviously, as you can see, putting it in, it's gonna be, a, if this drive shaft wasn't in the way, it would be so much more easier. If you want to take it off, take it off. Make your life so much more easier. But if we're trying to save over here some time, then why not? But for three hours to do the job, I don't think so. All right, so we're gonna have a few of 15 millimeter bolts and 13, so we're gonna have one, two three those are 15s and then here's a 13 13 and then right under this they're going to be 15 millimeters we need to take that off that's for the starter then on the back side of that we got to take off that um that bolt that's going right there that's on the back side of that that's another 15. then right up there that's a 13 and then behind that 13 is going to be a 15. Same thing for that little harness bolt right there. Um, it's going to be a 13 and then under it's a 15. And same thing as that one. It's going to be a 13, then a 15. And then that one right there is going to be a 15. And then right behind this, right here, that's going to be a 15 millimeter. And then right here, we're going to take off this little 10 millimeter dust cover plate. 
I don't think you need to take it off, but we're just going to take it off just in case. So there's the bracket that's holding in the wire harness. You're gonna grab that up, flip it towards the motor, and then just tuck it on the motor itself. So just sit it on top of the motor so it's out the way of the 15 millimeters. All right, so we're just gonna pull our starter back. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can just sneak this out. You're gonna have to lift up the, the motor and transmission a little bit. Just like how I'm doing. And then you'll be able to sneak out the the starter. Put the cable right through there. There's a little knock sensor. I don't know, you can see that. You're gonna pull off that little tab that I did. And then once you pull it off, you got these little side connectors on the, on the side of it. Just go ahead and pull those, or squeeze those. Push in, and then pull towards you. Just like that, and then our starter should slide right out. Again, I'm just I'm lifting it up with my knees just so I can sneak out the starter. And there we have it. Now be careful with the crank position sensor. This little wire right there. Just 
So that one right there, gotta be careful with that guy. So we can either disconnect it. There's a little red clip that you gotta pull. So you just gotta pull this guy right back. So pull that back. So pull this little tab back. So right now it won't get pushed in, but yeah, you pull it back and then you press down and then you can pull it back. All right, so now we have this starter out the way. We're gonna go ahead and take off this 13 millimeter bolt. I didn't see we had one more 13 millimeter right there. So let's pop that guy out. All right, so now we're gonna get a flathead screwdriver and just kind of hammer it. And once you start it off, then you should be able to pry it right out. It should drop. All right, once you take off that 10, then the rest should be history. We should be able to pull this guy right out. We have one final thing that's holding us in. You're gonna get your pick, and this is gonna be a little fastener clip. So as you can see right there, once you get that off, then you're all set and done. Pull this off. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and take off the flywheel. You need E-Torque bits. So they're gonna be inverted 12, so E-12. So this is how they're gonna look like. So let's go ahead and take them all off. There should be six in total. So before you take off this last bolt, make sure you're you're ready cuz it's going to fall. It's pretty heavy. So just keep in mind. So we're going to pull it out all together. And there we have it. So look at all that mess. Customer couldn't do a burnout right. Well, I mean, dude, the guy just got the car and blew up the clutch. Like, literally. All right, well, anyways, his mistakes are my income. Like, I mean, dude, this, this is a joke. Like, cleanup area. All right, let me, let me go ahead and figure out this new clutch. Alright, so here's our new clutch. Um, unfortunately, the RXT doesn't come with the new um, um, throwout bearing, which I mean, if you're going to spend, which my customer said, 1500 bucks for this clutch set. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know the price on this, but for 1500 bucks, I think they would have thrown in a little grease and they would have thrown in a throwout bearing. How cheap can you be for your customers? Well, at least they're nice enough to give the bolts all right um and then there's that sucker i mean like so if you ever burn out your clutch like this and there ain't no fabrics you need to find the fabrics they're in there i mean they're in there so they were behind the flywheel i was digging them out i don't need to take off the flywheel in this sense because obviously this one's bolts up to the flywheel because this one has its own little flywheel right here so just so you're aware like all this stuff. He just literally got this car not that long ago. I think he's probably only had it for less than a week or something. Um, so clean up your area. We're going to go ahead and clean up our area on the other flywheel as much as possible. Um, and then after you're done doing that, then right there on the bottom of your floor, wherever you're working at, just clean up that area because you don't want to be, you know, going around that area. Um, so use 
sweep it up first like sweep it up slowly so you're not getting all the fabric all over the place and then get like a wet rag and then clean it up you know just clean up the whole area just like this and then you know so forth and then so you can get it as clean as possible but all right um i'm gonna go clean up my area we're gonna get the clutch ready and then i gotta get some grease um this one didn't come with any grease so we can use some some like some brake brake grease that works uh, we just only need a thin coat because the dealer said it doesn't come with any grease it doesn't use any grease and i'm like well how come the new the old flywheel has grease on it um so we just need to put some grease on our splines i will show that those little factors um but yeah during that yeah um let's get back to it all right so i'm gonna have um isaac he isaac's gonna help me out we're gonna take off the throwout bearing right now and he's gonna do the work because you know you're my little helper right right isaac yeah. all right let's do this isaac all right so right now we have two 13 millimeter bolts that are right there we're gonna go ahead and take those off isaac's gonna help us take those off come here so come here hold this gun and then don't press the trigger yet so let's put this right here and then you're gonna go ahead and push the trigger right now so go ahead and pull it yeah go ahead and pull it don't be scared and then there you have it oh, let go all right now let's do this one we're gonna pull this one once the bolt comes all the way off then we're gonna stop okay so okay there we go all right so now we have it loose thanks to isaac we're able to get this part off and now we're gonna go ahead and pull off the throwout bearing and there we have it so just like that so now we're going to go ahead and clean this up. Um, if you are going to press out this throwout bearing, make sure this is not pointed towards you. Because as you can see, I accidentally squeezed it and uh, I got it all. I got it. At least I wasn't in the way. So as you can hear, the bearing doesn't sound good at all. It's all burned out. All right. So good thing we got, we got an OEM one. So we're going to go ahead and replace that. I'm going to go ahead and clean up this area right here. We'll clean that with some um, some degreaser and stuff. Um, make sure you probably put some tape, some tape right here, or like a little towel that you don't get right there. But we'll get right back to the video. All right, so here's our new throwout bearing. We're gonna put this on. We got our area cleaned up. But before we put that on, a little tip that you guys should know: you guys should clean out your pins right here. Now this will help out with insulation. So clean up both of those pins with the wire brush. So just kind of go like this. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and put on our throw out bearing. Make sure you still keep the pin on it. So we still want to keep this so we don't get no debris in there. And then this is going to sit in. Do not put any grease right here. Then um, we're going to use some blue Loctite. So just go ahead and shake this up before you use this. Now I just want to use this on these screws. Just I don't want this backing out on me. Um, so we're just only going to use it on the first couple threads. Just like that. Should come out like a little thick paste. Well, not too thick, like a watery paste. And then we'll just thread them in. And the same thing for the other one. All right, so we're all said and done. We got those down, bolted down. Um, if you wanna go by torque specs, go by torque specs. Um, but yeah, I think we should be fine with the blue Loctite, shouldn't back out. All right, so now we are ready to put on the flywheel. You're gonna spray brake cleaner on a rag. Again, we just wanna get our little surface area cleaned up. Not that it matters. And then we wanna get right here cleaned up and then I'll get all this area because we don't want no debris coming inside there. 
or anything like that. So I'm going to be using uh, ceramic glide. You can get this for about a dollar. Um, we just only need to put it in a certain little spot. We're going to put it inside here in the little bearings. Now this will help out with the bearings not going bad. You're supposed to actually replace it, but my customer didn't buy it. So honestly, you just need to put a little coat, just like how I did, and then just spin your finger around in there. Because if you put too much, it will come out. And then you'll start slipping. All right, so we got all that in there, so just like I said, a little thin coating. And make sure you spin the bearings. Now, if they feel funny or anything, or you feel it catching, then go ahead and replace it. But I'm not gonna go ahead and replace it because since the customer didn't provide the part for it, so, I mean, we're all said and done on that. All right, so now we are gonna install the pressure plate, but before we do that, make sure we have our bolts full of Loctite. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and use the blue Loctite. We're just gonna go ahead and use it on the threads. Just the beginning. Now this is for the pressure plate. All right, so our unit comes with two little um, sticks. The one that I'm using, power number is 107EX107 or yeah 07 well it goes all the way around uh, so 107EX1071EX so this is the one that I'm using it comes with two so whatever which one that yours works for there's a skinnier nipple and then there's a fatter nipple so we we're going to go with the fatter nipple because that's the one that doesn't have any play and it just sits in there just like that. So now we're gonna go ahead and put this on our flywheel first. So careful with the flywheel. Not that it matters, but All right, so once we get that in, I don't even think this will matter. Yeah, you don't even really need it. But we're gonna go ahead and thread in our bolts. So again, make sure you have the blue Loctite. And then these ones are actually 12 millimeters, the ones that I'm using. Up. All right, now we got that in. All right, so we need to go ahead and torque these. I'm gonna find out the torque specs. So we're gonna go ahead and torque down these bolts to 35 foot-pounds, and we're gonna do it in opposite pattern. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then go ahead and double check your last two that you did. Okay. Just like that. And I just have my hook, my foot just holding up in the flywheel, so. So I just put my foot my foot right here just to hold it in. But yeah, so all right, cool. We are all said and done. We're torqued down the specs, and we can just pull this guy right out. Should come out pretty easy. So now we are going to put on our cover plate. 
before we do that, let's make sure we get this guy all seated in. So we are all seated in. Now we're gonna go ahead and just thread in a couple bolts. We already threaded on this bolt right here and now the plate's being held on. So we're just gonna go ahead and thread on this one. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and put back in our starter. Make sure we get all our wires back in. And then lift up the motor as needed. Work yourself. got that in this is me just again lifting up the transmission with my knee and I'm using my hand right here just to to pull up all right all right let's see let's see our little bracket goes right here there's this little black bracket but before we connect anything let's make sure that we get our knock sensor in And our, um, and our, what you would call it, our crank position sensor, or yeah, I think it's either crank or cam, one of those two. So go ahead and connect this guy first. So make sure it clips right in, and then press down on the red tab. And then for the one right over there in the corner, the knock sensor. Make sure we get that connected in. Make sure it clips in. Once you get it clipped in, then you're going to go ahead and put in your little heat shield. And then we'll just clip it right over that. All right, cool beans, that's clipped in. We're ready to put in our starter. I thought I was recording, but all I did was just put on the starter. Uh, we put up this top bolt right there. This one right here behind the bracket and then obviously this 15 millimeter. It's a long one, just like this. That's the one that we put right there. I thought I was recording, but our three longest bolts, they're gonna go one, two, and three right there. Our our little heads are gonna go right there, the ones that stick out, just so we're aware. Get that all the way in. So we're gonna get these all tightened down.
make sure you put in the dust shield for the starter or the heat shield. We're ready for the transmission install. We got our heat shield. We got all our bolts tightened down and so forth. So let's do this. Um, I'm going to lift up the motor a little bit or the car a little bit up higher so I can sneak in the jack. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put up the tranny. Um, I'm going to try to record this to the best of my abilities on this. Let me see if I can get this all zoomed in and stuff. Or at least checked out. Right, so most of our weight is going to be in the back of the tranny. So right here. This part is going to be our heaviest. So if you can get this centered as possible. And try to get you know your jack or whatever. Right here to the center of the transmission. Alright so let's go ahead and lift up this bad boy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get this, this little pole right here past the exhaust just a tad bit. And so once we get it past the exhaust, then we should be fine. And then keep an eye out for the drive shaft. So if you need to move that out the way, then move it. All right, so here we have it backed all the way to the exhaust. And then right, as you can see, we are gonna barely clear this. So make sure. All right, so once we get it past right there, the transmission, we're gonna go ahead and push in and then just go a little bit more. And then we're going to focus on our drive shaft because we don't want this above. We want this under. So we're going to go ahead and just lift this right up at the same time. Then we'll push forward or we'll lower it just a tad bit. So that's where exactly where I want the drive, the shaft to be at. I want it to be as close to transmission. So at least we could try to push most of it and then Coming right back here, if I can, let's see if I can push this to the side and and all right. So once we get that parallel, what we can do is we can lift it up just a tad bit. All right, so once we got that, we know we're gonna pass the the shaft or the um, the drive shaft. Then we're gonna go back over here, and now we're kind of hitting the flywheel a little bit. So we're just gonna pull it back, just like that. And now we should be able to be passed like that. So we're going to go ahead and lift it up a little bit more and then we're going to try to keep it as close as to the transmission. We want to make sure we have everything all centered and as we get closer we need to push it in. Sorry guys, I know my ca camera quality is bad right now. So, Alright, so we lift up, we push in, we lift up, we push in, we lift up, and we push in. I think that's as far as my jack will go, but let me lower the car a little bit, and then we're just gonna lower this one. And then we'll push in, lower, push in. I think we're there. All right, so once we are there, 
Now we just gotta line just a tranny. So we're gonna go in the back. So right here, we are gonna spin the rear of the shaft. So at the same time, we're gonna, I'm gonna have my hand right here on the back of the shaft while at the same time pushing it in. All right, so let's do this. So you're just gonna wiggle it back and forth. So right here, I'm grabbing this too as well while pushing it in. So since we got a few threads in there, the rest should be history. So we're gonna start off a couple threads. So if you need to wiggle it back and forth. All right, so I'm gonna go to the opposite side. Right back here. I'm gonna start a couple threads. If this does not go in smoothly, then obviously you know something's going on and you got an issue. So now I can take off my jack. So this one's supposed to have a little clip right here. So make sure you have that in. Just like that. We'll put in our top bolts. So for this one, don't forget to put on your, your little bracket. We're gonna go ahead and put on our clutch line, but before we do that, make sure our little strap is, is open. And then let's make sure we do this fast. So pull off the little plug right here. So we're gonna pull off that plug. And then we're gonna go ahead and pull off the, the clutch line. All right, so we'll just put that in so it clips right in. Once it clips, pull it back. If it pulls back, then try to put it back in and then clip that in until you're all said and done. Then once you're done with that, then just go ahead and wipe your area. All right, so our harness, remember the one with the O2 sensor wire, the one that looks like this is gonna go over our transmission onto the other side. And I'm going to use my hand to feed it, and I'm going to pull it with my with my other hand. I'll feed it over there. Then right here, we'll clip this guy right here. And then we're going to go ahead and put this guy right here. We'll connect this connector. All right, make sure it clips in. Once it clips in, you're all said and done. Then push this guy right in there. And then we're gonna go ahead and clip this guy right back here to this little switch. All right, perfect. All right, so we got those two in. Now let's go do the other side. All right, so we're gonna have, I think it's one for our, our little sensor. Make sure this is facing up. And I think there's like a little piece right here you can connect. Alright, so make sure those are both in. And then for this guy, 
I think we gotta clip that in if I remember correctly. Oh no. This one doesn't go here. It goes right here. Alright, make sure you clip that in if it stays in. Alright, the little tab is broken right there. Uh, not the end of the world. Um, now I think we are ready to bolt up our transmission. Make sure our drive shaft's not on top. It needs to be up on bottom. But yeah, I mean, let, let's go ahead and knock this out. So we're going to go ahead and feed it in our shifter right now. Alright, so we're going to push the, the drive shaft over to the right. Then we're going to feed in our clutch pedal. So I think for right here, we're going to go ahead and put in our little pins. I think this will be the best time to put them in. And then just push that one up to lock it. And then right here, we're going to do the same thing for that one, except the lock's up on top. So we put, we'll pull down right there. All right, so we'll go ahead and do one last thing. We'll put this guy in. Make sure you pull back the the pole. This one was out. I think it probably got pressed in while we we're moving it around. So pull back the, the shifter on the transmission. And then just keep threading away. We're gonna go ahead and thread this in. Yeah, push this one up. Higher, higher. Okay, keep it right there. Hold it up. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pull this up and then we're just gonna thread in this bolt right here. We're just gonna start off our thread all right, once we start off our thread, we are all set and done right there. And then we'll, we'll come back to here. We're just going to go back under the car and then and do the rest. All right, let's see if we can just put this right in. All right, what's the pain in the butt to get it in uh, neutral, but... Everything should spin nice and easy. All right, so now let's go ahead and bolt up everything.
All right, so we're all tied in for right here. Make sure you tighten down these pretty well. Yeah. And now we're gonna put on our exhaust. Okay. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put in our exhaust. I'm gonna put in. I'm gonna put in this tip last. I'm gonna do this tip fan first. So we'll put this guy right in here. Then we'll go ahead and put in our, our top one. Once you put it in, you squeeze it in. You know it. Alright, so once we get that guy in, we're just going to push it in. You got it? Mm hmm. So we need to twist this, so I'm going to go ahead and twist it, or we could pry it from this side, whatever works. Then you hold strong like my buddy Chris. Thank you, thank you. Keep going. So I was kicking the exhaust right here. We we're able to spin it a little bit. So now we got it in. And now we can put in the bolts. And then we'll plug in the O2 sensor. I'm not gonna show that part, but I mean, obviously you'll know where it's go because that's the only connector. All right, press it into that one clips. And now we're going to put on the other side. Alright, so we got it in. Try to push it in as much as possible. But sometimes they're a little... Mm hmm and then we're gonna go ahead and just spin this one up okay. we're gonna go ahead and just drive this guy right in all right so now that we have this one first in now we just need to spin it so right here on this piece we just need to kick it All right, so while I was pry this one I had to pry a little bit and I was able to spin it right in. All right, so now we are fully in, ready to bolt down. So same thing for this one. We're gonna go ahead and put our little wire right through here. And then we are gonna connect it right through here.
All right, so we're gonna go put on our, our cover plate. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten down this bolt. Then we're gonna go ahead and put in our little shifter. Now obviously this goes in like, I'm trying to show this at the same time. So it goes in just like that. And then we'll go ahead and just thread it in. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and connect our little connector right back here. Don't forget to do that. So that one sits right here. So make sure the little tab to release it is on the bottom. All right, so once that clips in, now we're gonna go ahead and push. So we're gonna push in here first. So make sure that these guys clip in and then we're gonna push down just like that. And then push down the boot. All right, so once we got down the boot, we are. All right, we're all said and done. All right, so now to bleed the clutch pedal, it's a, it's a funny, it's a funny setup. I mean, funny setup. What you gotta do is that you gotta pump up the clutch slowly. Now this could take up to 200 times of doing this. So you're gonna push all the way down and then let it come all the way up. Push all the way down, let it come up. Now you have to do this slowly. Now this is gonna bleed out just like that. So we're gonna keep doing this. I feel it building up a little resistance. See how the pedal is coming back up faster? But if you do it slow, it'll bleed faster. Now if you're pumping it like crazy, it's not gonna work. So we're gonna keep doing this slow because if you keep pumping it up too fast is that the air is gonna, it's gonna suck right back up. So yeah, I'm feeling, I'm feeling some resistance. Now you just have to keep driving this like this or, I mean, you have to just keep pumping it until it's, like, really nice and hard and to the way how you originally had it. So, now I'm feeling a little bit more pressure. Now, it's getting a little bit more harder. So, now I can feel some pressure. So, it's getting there. Okay. So, now we're, now we're feeling something. I would say push down, leave it for about two seconds, pull back up, leave it for two seconds, push down for two seconds, and then pull back up for two seconds. And I, I can actually feel the effects even faster on that. So yeah, like I'm feeling the clutch pedal. I'm getting more stronger. So yeah, um, that's pretty much what you're going to keep doing and then you're going to have to go on the inside right here, just pull this guy right up and then our, our right here, I think it's dot four. So yeah, our reservoir for our brakes, make sure you put dot four in it. Um, we're gonna put, we're gonna, I gotta go get some dot four that we're gonna go ahead and fill it up. Let me see how much dot four I got in there. So we're kinda a little bit low. So as you can see, we're right there. Let me go top this off because we can't get it, we can't get it past the clutch line. 
but yeah anyways um just top this off with dot four that's what the requirement is for this one um because it has the brembo package and stuff um i think if you have the regular challenger i think it is dot three just the regular ones with the regular brakes but as you can see we have the brembo um brake kit but yeah if this video helped you out give it a thumbs up comment down below if you have any questions and hit that subscribe button for more upcoming videos in the future and thanks for watching